Welcome back chemistry students. We're going to start talking about ionic radii. Before we do that, we have to first figure out what ions are. So you might remember this from middle school or from ninth grade physical science. Cations have a positive net charge because electrons were lost. So if we lost a negative electron, that means there are more protons than electrons. So there's an overall positive charge. Up until now, we've always said atoms are neutral. Not true. Ions have a charge and are much more stable and more common than just your elements. Anions have a negative net charge because electrons were gained. I remember this by thinking that onions or anions are negative. Here are a couple other jokes for you. Um, I lost an electron. Are you positive? Be positive cation. Or lose an electron? Gotta keep an eye on it. I like this one too. This one's how I always um, imagine cations actually look. They're positively charged. And here's a little, little stand-up comedy joke for you. So we got two hydrogen atoms walking to a bar. One says, I think I lost an electron. The other says, are you sure? To which the person replies, yes, I'm positive. That was a bad joke. The audience responds with EGAD. But just keep that in mind. You need to know what a cation is and what an anion is. So let's go through and actually define them. So we said already, um, a cation, when a neutral atom has lost an electron. So there is an overall net negative charge. So there's going to be a net negative charge. Oh, no, I just did this backwards. Don't write that. Ah, I couldn't remember the handwriting. We didn't have a net negative charge. We lost a negative charge. So if we in math class, if we subtract a negative, what do we get? We get a positive. We have a positive charge because the protons, there are more of them than the electrons. This is what's going to happen. Um, metals on the periodic table, they want to lose electrons. They're going to lose electrons. They are going to clear out an electron shell. and then they are going to become smaller. So, so if they clear out an electron shell, then that means they are going to become smaller. So here's an example that I'm gonna give you. So let's say we have sodium. Sodium's abbreviated electron configuration is Ne, neon, and then 3s1. So sodium has a problem. It is not stable. It is not anywhere close to being a noble gas. If we look on the periodic table, sodium's right here. If we, fill it, if we fill out that shell, it'd be like argon. We'd have to gain seven more electrons, but sodium could lose that one valence electron and become like neon. So let's look at what actually happens. So sodium has neon 3s1 configuration. It's going to lose this valence electron, okay? So this is my, my neutral sodium atom. To become more stable, it's going to be sodium and with an electron configuration just like neon. There are no more electrons, and it's going to have a positive charge. So it's going to be sodium with a 1 plus charge. And its configuration would be neon in brackets. Now, that isn't really a good way to write it. Um, we would rather say, well, actually, if we wanted to abbreviate, it would be helium 2s2, 2p6. So now sodium, the ion, it ends with 2s2, 2p6. If we want to even draw a Bohr model, there's one energy level, there's the second energy level, and it has an overall positive charge. My original sodium atom, it had the first energy level, it had the second energy level, and it had one electron on the third energy level. So if we want to show that, it had two electrons, that's going to be 1s2. Then the second level, it had 2s2, 2p6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six. If you check here, I have just drawn two, eight, ten, eleven electrons. That is the sodium atom. Then the sodium ion just has two electrons. That's one s two. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight electrons on the second ring. That's a two s two, two p six. And two electrons on the first ring. So right here, there are ten electrons. And that nucleus, because it's sodium there are 11 protons, so what is my net charge? There's a plus one positive net charge. So the size of the radius after a neutral atom has gained or lost an electron is the ionic radii. So sodium gets smaller. 
So cations, when the neutral atom lost an electron, it's going to get smaller because we're going to be clearing out an electron shell, a whole energy level, and dropping down to a lower configuration. Let's look at what an anion looks like. Anions, when a neutral atom has gained an electron. So we are gaining a negative charge. So in math class, if I'm adding a negative, I end up with a negative. This time the electrons are going to outnumber the protons. So this is going to be nonmetals. Nonmetals gain electrons to fill an electron shell. So if we look at our periodic table, so over here we have the losers, the metals. They're going to lose an electron and drop down to a previous noble gas. But let's look at our nonmetals, everything to the right of the zigzag line. If we look maybe sulfur, for example, um, it is going to want to gain two electrons to become like argon. That's easier than losing like six electrons to become like neon. So we're going to focus in on the example of chlorine. Chlorine has 17 protons, 17 electrons. It really wants to be like argon. It could gain one electron, that'd be pretty easy, or it could lose seven and drop down and become like neon. Chlorine is lazy, it wants to do the least amount of work, so it's going to just gain that one electron and become like argon. So let's model what that's going to look like. So if we wrote out chlorine's configuration, so chlorine is atomic number 17, sodium was atomic number 11, chlorine's configuration is neon 3s. 2, 3p5. And you see how close it is to being a noble gas. If it was 3p6, it'd have a completely full stable shell and be really, really happy. But it's not. So let's look at what the chlorine ion does. So chlorine with a net charge of 1 minus, it's going to become neon 3s2, 3p6. Now, what is that actually if we had neon 3s2, 3p6? So neon 3s1, 3s2. Um, 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is the exact same configuration as argon. Some of you say, wait, 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 where did the extra electron come from? It came from the environment. It was probably donated by some metal. So exa for example, sodium and chlorine, when they get together, they form sodium chloride, which is table salt. That's why you can take an explosive metal like sodium, a toxic gas like chlorine, mix them together and just move that one electron and get something that's totally innocuous and mostly harmless, table salt. Um, and so this has a net charge of minus one with a net negative charge, and that's because there are still only those 17 positive protons, but now there are 18 negative electrons, so that's a minus one net charge. Now, if you notice before, I talked about how the cations are going to be smaller. I haven't said what happens to the anions yet. We're going to do a little bit more investigation to look at what actually happens there. I want you to kind of think about a hypothesis in your mind and think about what it might be, and we'll investigate that um, looking at some actual data and graphing some things. We have another new vocabulary word, isoelectronic series. So let's break that down piece by piece. Iso, what does iso mean? Think of geometry. Isosceles triangles have two of the same sides, so that prefix iso means same. Electronic, well, that's going to refer, refer to my electrons. So isoelectronic series, they have the same number of electrons. They have the same number of electrons. So it is technically defined as groups of atoms or ions, both. Groups of atoms. and ions with the same number of electrons. Let's look at some examples. We've got magnesium 2 plus, we have sodium 1 plus, neon, fluorine 1 minus, and oxygen 2 minus. Let's just kind of get an idea of where those are on the periodic table. So we have neon, um, Magnesium, sodium, so here's magnesium, sodium, neon, fluorine, oxygen, and then let's go through these piece by piece. So magnesium, from the periodic table, it has 12 protons. Now it should have 12 electrons, but if there's a two plus charge, that means that there's two more protons than electrons. 
So what number is 2 less than 12? That'd be 10. Remember, protons have our positive charge. Electrons have our negative charge. Let's just go through and do that, that part first. Um, other thing I want to know is what energy level is magnesium in? Magnesium is in the, second ener the third energy level, but if it has lost two electrons, it actually drops down to the second energy level. Um, sodium, sodium is atomic number 11. It's a plus one charge though, or a one plus. So there are only 10 electrons. Neon, atomic number 10, and there are 10 electrons. Fluorine, atomic number nine, but is a net negative charge. That means it's gained one electron. Oxygen, atomic number eight from the periodic table, but as a two negative charge, that means it has two more electrons and protons. Take a look. What happened? These all have the exact same number of electrons. This is an isoelectronic series. This is just one example. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think. Which one of these has a greater attraction to the nucleus? What electron cloud? Each electron cloud has 10 electrons. That means they all finish the second energy level. Magnesium and sodium cleared out their 3s shell and dropped down to the 2p. Neon normally finishes the 2p shell. Fluorine and oxygen also want to be like finishing the 2p shell. So which one of these has the higher attraction? Look at these numbers carefully. If you said magnesium, you would be correct. Let's take a look. We've got a 12 plus and a 10 minus. We got 12 positive protons pulling on that electron cloud. They're going to hug that cloud in the tightest. And so this is going to have the highest attraction. And then by that same um, line of logic, which one's going to have the lowest attraction? It's going to be oxygen over here. So that's going to have the lowest attraction because now there are only going to be eight positive protons trying to tug in on that 10 electrons electron cloud so it will not shrink the electron cloud nearly as much and then the end's going to be somewhere it's going to be somewhere in the middle okay so and then you could say you know sodium's in between that and fluorine's in between there so what can we conclude more protons is more pull um less protons there's less pull so less attraction higher attraction So the next step I want you to take logically is which of these will be the largest? High attraction, that means the electron cloud is pulled in tight, so this is going to be smaller. Low attraction, that means the cloud can kind of expand more. This is actually going to be larger. So in general, the cations, when they lose a shell, they become smaller. The anions, when they fill a shell, there is less attraction and they become larger. So let's go back up and fix this. Um, clear out shell, they become smaller, they gain or fill a shell, in general, anions will become larger. And we will explore that more with some, with some plotting and some graphing later. Okay, so let's go through and try some of these on our own. We'll try first couple together and try a few on your own. So look at francium versus francium plus. So looking at your periodic table, francium's right here. It has one valence electron. It wants to lose it and become like radon. So when francium loses that one valence electron and becomes francium 1 plus, which one is bigger? Francium will be bigger. And why? Because it loses um, this one. So francium 1 plus loses the 7s shell. So it is smaller. So francium ends with 7s1, so it's bigger. Let's take a look at sulfur versus sulfur 2 minus. So this is an anion, nonmetal, wants to gain two electrons, so always has 16 protons. Sulfur has 16 electrons. Sulfur 2 minus becomes like a noble gas. It becomes like argon. More electrons with the same number of protons, so it will have less attraction because the protons hasn't changed. So which one will be bigger? Sulfur 2 minus will be bigger um, because same protons. More electrons and then the cloud expands. Let's try aluminum versus aluminum 3 plus. So 
aluminum versus aluminum three plus. So here's aluminum. It's in the third level. If it loses three electrons, it drops.